is we finally have our last competitor <laughs> in the lobby. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, and everyone just spamming the R key as they are definitely ready to go into this next game. Uh, we'll see here. Looks like, yeah, we have a little bit of a team comp switch here. Chill dudes going now for this Sylvia Magnus. We got the double bike gang going on. So that'll be fun to see. I think Magnus has always been just like a solid character lately. Uh, even in like the solos like scene as just Amp with the Amp drone has just been so strong and securing early kills and even stealing kills too. He's kind of yeah. a badass. <laughs> Let's go. I'm so happy to see Magnus. He's easily my favorite character in the game. A character I've played a lot. Funny enough, uh, Uvabi Fanboy is actually holding on to bat at the moment. And it's even kind of interesting that, like, Passant is running Amp Drone, but we have Free Stratos running Frailty. And they're both kind of doing, like, the same thing, but they're running different augments. So Passant's kind of overloading all of his damage into his checkmate. And it also could potentially power up Esther as well, as they're both kind of diving in there. So it's kind of nice to see that they're kind of doing slightly different variants, but they're doing the same thing overall. Well, I think Eternal Return has like a defense creep problem where literally all the legendary items late game have like 40 defense randomly tagged on. And I think <laughs> that's why Armor Shred is so important. And yeah. I think Frailty is the way to go to kind of make sure you have that burst through all stages of the game. As much as it's not the greatest thing in the early stages because there's not a whole lot of defense to shred, in the later stages it is going to come in clutch. And unfortunately, Fable Frog is going to fall to absolute terror and Meek Speedy very, very early here. And it yeah. seems like the Sylvia has not moved off spawn. As it looks like we have Ghost running away from Meek, as we were just talking about, that he's always in beach. It's not a surprise that Tim and Terror are there. And Fable Frog, again, unfortunately, just running into a team and just not able to get their build online. And that's kind of it's a tale as all this time. We spoke about game number one. If you do get caught in these early stages, suddenly you're so far behind te uh, tempo, any team you run into is going to be stronger than you. Um, mm -hmm. So now you're really on Copium. There's no other way of saying it. You're going to have to uh, get your stuff together quickly and make sure that your teammate can kind of carry you through. Unfortunately here, if Fable Frog and Uvabu Fanboy haven't met up and they're just going to get punished here, as Free Stratos looks to take Cemetery Tree for free. Yeah, nine Free just went straight to Hotel Tree as that is their usual plan. And yeah, they were there uncontested. And I guess no one went Sem Tree this game as it was, I believe, Chill Dudes that were there the first game. Uh, to get the Phantom Jacket for their Mai. So, yeah, it looks like no one is actually at Cemetery this game. So it's a second tree for Nine Eye and Free Stratos as we do have two teams meeting up here in Temple. It looks like the Priya ulti does come out to try to create some space here, but I don't think they'll be able to get out as the Sua is going to go on the aggressive onto the Camillo here. I'll have to see what happens as they decide to turn around. Oh, oh my gosh, this kill actually almost got stolen by Lily here. As now Nine is also on the run from Passat and Esther Queen is prepped from Passat, but Nine does have the speed gates available, so he should be able to run out of here as Free's gonna decide to meet up with him probably in Factory. And it's gonna be one of those annoying zones where there's three speed gates right next to each other, so there's no way you're gonna catch anybody in that little little place unless you can get in front of them. Is our Camilo does actually fall as does the Priya on the opposite side, but from what I saw, Sua and Camilo definitely had the advantage, so maybe. Uh, Lily Pill played a little bit of spoiler there. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, and it looks like, oh, we do have another team coming out. Looks like the bike from hell does come out. Coup de Gras, as well as the Aya ulti coming out with the steady shot. Just not enough damage coming out as Meek does fall. So Terra is going to run away, it looks like, here. Decides to play it safe. As, unfortunately, Meek's going to go down to that team. And Free Stratos and Nine also fighting now in hospital, it looks like, here. Queen is prepped. It does, unfortunately, miss from Free. So they are going to back up. Does hit the knock up there. But there's also, looks like there's another team above them as well. So they got to be a little bit careful in this zone here. As that fire laser does fall on the other side of the map here. Nine Eye kind of looking to poke on here. E is going to connect onto Priya. So potentially an all in here. Free Strauss looking at combo. They're going to have to tank some red. As Free Strauss really wants this kill. Queen is going to land. Checkmate's actually uh, procced here. Yeah, it looks like the Echoes of the Earth coming out from the Priya isn't enough as, yeah, Checkmate just lands right on top of them. Not enough defense coming out from the Priya ulti, unfortunately, as looks like Free's going to go on the aggressive here. It looks like he's just checking that no res is going off. And, yep, there goes the Priya going down. But, again, only day two, so they should res in the next couple 
seconds here. A couple, as I say, it's like 10 seconds. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So I was going to say it's a lot of damage, but he's only level 2. That makes sense. Um, one of the things about the Priya death is because the death was in red, they are actually going to tank a lot of timer. Is that timer isn't going to refresh like your death. So if they do get to the late game stages, this Magnus bike from hell comes in. And Lilypel is just going to try and deal as much damage as they can on their turn. But Fable Frog is looking to run in and burst. But a little scared off by a pawn as we see Meek's speedy in absolute terror. Terror. <laughs> just a little bit behind Meek as Meek just does it all on his own. So much burst coming from this dual sword, Yuki. It's just such a weird thing to see these days. Is I'm pretty sure Meek is the only person still playing it. Yeah, he loves the DS Yuki, that is for sure. You know, it's like, so funny to me that, like, Meek is always like, no, never use ulti on DS Yuki because it's just, like, it's not as much DPS. And that's kind of, like, what they're doing with this Aya comp is they're trying to combo the Amp Drone with the Coup de Gras for the bigger damage. But it's like, is that actually more damage for the DS Yuki or is it better for him just to actually auto off of the Aya ulti? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, it, it might just make it easier to land Aya's abilities if the Kuda Grad does have a slow attached to it, but I'm not sure, in all honesty. Um, Meek's been lying to us. You should always ult on DS Yuki, you can tell right here. Right, and it looks like Free oh, does have a Queen prepped. It does not land here. It looks like Nana is going to go on the aggressive on the Sua. Mania does hit, so Plague does come out. A lot of damage is coming out here. You should see Plague 2 coming out, but doesn't actually take him out here. Looks like Don Quixote does hit. Mania does hit as well, though. It should take out the Sua here. And it's like, unfortunately, Camilla's the last one left as... I'm surprised they're actually going in to try to get the res. I thought they'd be going out here. And there's actually another team behind Nai Nai. So we'll have to see if they recognize what's going on and they escape or not. Oh, you can kind of see a confidence thing here as well. You know, the Sua brought Nai Nai down really, really low. So I think if getting jiggy with it actually, like fight on the same terms and are on the same page as a duo i think they can probably burst nai nai before free stratos can kill them but nai nai and free stratos are just so confident with their character on like a micro level they just know they're kind of going to outplay the people in front of them and then mm -hmm. that's kind of what matters right you need that confidence in your in both your duo and in your character and it seems like getting jiggy with it may be lacking that a little bit yeah, 100%. Yeah, they both are kind of just like playing their own fights there. And oh, it looks like we do have the bike from hell coming out, but unfortunately it actually misses there. And we have Ghost, looks like following up Fruit Cake here. Ruthless does come out, and it looks like he gets knocked against the wall. Char or Five Omens does come out, doing a lot of damage here to the Magnus as the 17 versus 1 comes out. Looks like Fruit Cake is able to finish that off. Tries to chase Fable Frog here, but unfortunately, too far away. As a rate of arrows does miss as well, so they'll take their one kill here in hospital. A very unfortunate situation from there. Uh, from that, the Magnus actually tries to throw the bike at the Hage, and the Hagen just steps it. And that may come down to like a little bit of a ping issue. So we may have a couple European spies infiltrating this uh, <laughs> tournament, but you know it is one of these things that happens. But you have to disengage when that bike doesn't land, and unfortunately, they just can't do it. You know the W doesn't come in from Magnus making them unstoppable, so it just be like that sometimes. It do be like that sometimes, but oh my god, the queen does hit from Passant here, and Checkmate is coming out as they do some pretty big damage as, yep, there goes the Camillo out, and so it's just gonna use the Don Quixote to get away here. As, yeah, that was just a massive combo coming from Passant, recognizing that they were gonna try to go for the Hyperloop. Yeah, Passant's so good, honestly. I I'm surprised to not see him on Tia, but I think he's showing the strength of this Adela pick as, uh, down goes Priya in the red actually that's going to be an explosion of full timer is gone I think they still actually have enough timer to res as they died one second before uh, day three came in so it is what it is so this Priya is being bullied around the map anywhere she goes she's just getting annihilated yeah it's very unfortunate we do have Passant and Esther it looks like they're taking down the free Omega here so it is a free force core for them we'll see what they decide to do with it here my guess is going to be like auto arms for one of them it looks like they're kind of... Well, they both their RNG's kind of even, so I guess I'm not really sure who's going to go to. Oh. I would hope that it's going to be an Elysian Halo. Because <laughs> um, I'm not a big fan of that headpiece. Uh, we'll, but we'll have to see. Yeah, for sure. And it looks like... Free and Nine I picked up something, I believe, for the transfer console, unless I missed something. <laughs> it looks like, yeah, Free did get a Mithril from the transfer console. And it looks like we do have another team fighting it out here. Looks like the Odyssey does hit, the Duende is coming out to try to reduce some of the damage, and he is coming out from the Camillo. A lot of damage, other Duende, to reduce some of that damage here. Is he going to be able to take out the Magnus? 
She's getting awfully close, but it will not be enough as, unfortunately, another team does go down here. And as we're seeing Ghost Electricity and Fruitcake on the other side of the map just being destroyed. Absolute Terror is actually going to be trying to play spoiler here. Does get knocked up, but down goes the Adela, but Absolute Terror is already chunked out. Meek Speedy, on the other hand, full HP, Lilypel is going to have to try and do her best to get this one saved for a teammate, but Meek Speedy's just going to chase her out here. Aren't you Toxis and Cube Watch already finished for Lily, but I don't think it's going to be enough to 2v1 here. It's Absolute Terror is actually waiting in the wings on the other side of school. Lily Petal smells blood in the water and knows where it's coming from. So it's just going to run away. But they're really wanting this kill being so aggressive here, Lucy. Yeah. I mean, it was a good play at first as yeah, Meek was just trying to get Lily Petal away from Terror so he could finish off to Sepia there. And it actually oh. didn't, actually. He decided to go on the aggressive, so they better actually hurry back to the body as Lily is going to try to pull off this res here. So we'll have to see if it's enough there. to get there. He does use the monkey oh bar over the wall. We'll have to see here as Terra is desperately looking oh for the blade cartridge available, but he doesn't actually find them as they're going to try to sneak over to the Hyperloop, I believe. Lily's played this so good. I can't believe they actually pulled that off. Yeah, I mean, like, you very rarely see Rezzy's coming off in duo tournaments full stop. You know, you want to guarantee your kill, you want to guarantee the points. But Lily manages to loop de loop around Meek Speedy in absolute terror here. Yeah, I think they recognize that something's going on here as they're going to try to take the console. Looks like the knockup does come out from Sepia. Steady shot coming out from Terra here for some damage. And the frailty is procced already, so this would be the time to kind of go in quick before that comes back up. Wolf Assault is going off. Coup de Gras comes out from Meek, but it's not enough damage to take a Lily Petal here. As it's just Terror, and he tries to poke with the steady shot, but not enough damage, so he's actually going to come out of that one. As we do have Mr. and Passat taking a free wick for themselves here. And that is very unfortunate for Terror and Meek as a... Could have almost taken out that team, but then it just got completely turned around as Lily got the res off. Yeah, and it looks like Esther did make the Bloody Nine Tails with the one they got from Wick. We'll have to see what Lily Petal's team decides to do with the blood sample they had obtained. It looks like it's going to go to a Necronomicon, yep, for Lily Petal, which is going to be a huge pickup as that extra healing reduction is going to be huge. As Passant does find Terror kind of hiding out over here. It looks like, yeah, they're going to kind of peek around the corners, but Terry decided to go the other way. So he's going to be a little bit safer for a little bit longer here. And we're starting to see play players starting to play a little bit more cautiously here. Lilypel does know exactly where Absolute Terror is. Terror going to look to try and take the fight here. Andron's going to get procced by Lilypel with that Wolf Assault, but Absolute Terror has absolutely no chance in winning that 2v1. But one well-placed queen, well-placed knockup is just going to blow Lily Petal up. So she's going to have to position perfectly or they are just going to die. Yeah, and Esther's team as well, they do have the whip skill available to pull Lily Petal out. Or even if they pull to Sepia and they're able to burst them or even just to get the checkmate propped early, like that'll be, that couldn't be enough as well to take out that team. Because if Tisepia goes down, then that's not enough peel for Lily Petal as we see them coming out here. And Tisepia is going to go down, like I just said, and it's going to be up to Lily Petal as the Twilight Heist does hit from Esther. It should be enough to take Lily Petal down as I guess I just told the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And we like, it is a tale as old as time, you know, Nadine, they spend their entire game getting strong for one CC to hit them and for them just to be taken from this universe. Uh, really unfortunate there, but again, these Adelas are so good at what they do. Passant, perfect use of every one of his skills. And then Esther's job's just so easy after that point. And then honestly, performing really well themselves as well, just taken probably the like the biggest threat that they had completely out of the game and now have that necronomicon for whoever wants it really yeah and it looks like they did give it to passant which is a good idea it's, it's easy for him to proc it with the pawns that he's going to be throwing out onto the field and temple will be our final zone here so we'll see the team's kind of heading that way it looks like the priya team is already ready they do have some smart bombs to their name We'll have to see if that is enough for them. They might set him up in one of the final zones here, but looks like Nine Eye and Free might be coming up from the other side. So this team actually might be getting squished in between two teams. We'll have to find out here. 
And honestly, underdog, they could play a really important part in this fight. You know, if they catch one team out and make them use ultimates to kind of win the fight, it could be the difference maker. I, I don't think they're going to be the team that takes down everybody here, but they might be the deciding factor here as Passan and Esther smell blood in the water and they are going to chase on. They actually land a queen in the bush into the whip skill. Really heads up play there by Passan. Priya all is going to come out, so is Checkmate. Esther kind of really far forward here. Twilight Heist is going to unfortunately not get them out here. And exactly like what I was saying, underdogs are going to play a pivotal part. Queen lands on both. Passan doing their absolute best to take them both down here. As Lazy Nara is actually going to get the res. And unfortunately, Passan and Esther just going a little bit too hard for a kill. And get taken or fractured a bit. As uh, Nai Nai looks to push them out here, Lucy. And X yeah. are unfortunately going to go down. Yeah, I thought they were going to stay to kind of finish off the two bodies here, but I guess they're not really worried about the underdog team taking them out as free. And Nai Nai know that they're incredibly strong. So they did let them take out Esther here, but that means they do get Esther's upgrades. So it could still be a bit of a misplay as they could have used a lot of those items that were on Esther's body. But it looks like they will get a, be getting a free zone on the upper side of Temple here as Passant's going to try to get something done in this zone. He does have the queen prepped. Yeah. He does castle over the wall, though, to kind of escape. Might run into Fable Frog here, so it'll be a 1v1, as Fable Frog is full HP if Passant is not, and it looks like the checkmate is coming out with the amp drone, but it's not enough damage, and there goes the radar gun to finish it off. Yeah, and it's a really important pickup here from Fable Frog. You know, his points in the bank. That's exactly what you need, especially when your teammate falls. It's a really good pickup from Fable. Unfortunately, getting chunked out by Priya, as he is going to have to go towards this zone eventually. Camille is just going to get on Tommy, trying to use pistol skill to close the gap. Going to gain some fuel from this mutant bear, trying to re-engage. Has to do something here. Priya with a beautiful charm, it's just a matter of time. And Fable Frog is going to go down. <laughs> Yep, and we do see Free and Nai Nai running into the zone here as they know they should have more timers. Smart bombs are going to start coming out here, so we'll see if Nai and them know it, but they obviously don't care as Nai Nai uses the flag with the rapier still to go in, and that's just so much damage coming out from Free that Nai Nai almost didn't even have to use the second activation of alt, but it looks like Nai Nai and Free will be taking our game two with a seven kill win. And it is a good game. You know, we got this new Cobalt Protocol mode. It's, it's, pretty, ca it's pretty casual. It's fun. Uh, speaking about things that aren't casual and fun, we have our points in, Lucy. And in first place, with an absolutely dominant performance here, we have Peabody and Sherman, the team of Nai Nai and Free Strauss, at 159 points already. Yeah. 159 points. In second place, we have Orphans Can Draw with 57. Close behind them, we have Twice with 56 in third place. In fourth place, we actually have Chill Dudes, our European Spies, with 42 points. In fifth place, we have Tessie Petal with 37 points. In sixth place, we have Underdog with 28 points. In seventh place, we have Absolute Terrors with 22. In eighth place, we have Getting Jiggy with it with 10 points. And in ninth place, we have Daniel with the white rhinos, damn Daniel, you're gonna have to get some <laughs> points or you're gonna be sitting in bottom of this tournament. Yeah, it's uh, the points are starting to spread out here. As you can see, who's kind of been dominating these lobbies and who's struggling a little bit. But like we said, we still have five games or five games total. So we still have three more. So there's still plenty of time for some of these teams to catch up and get to the top half of the scoreboard as it is the top four teams that make it out. And then that last spot is going to be taken by a was it a fifth place team with the most points out of between the two groups. I think I said yeah. that right. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like trying to explain it the best I can. <laughs> yeah. So fifth place with the most most points is going to yeah take the final spot in the finals. Yeah. Whatever. So honestly, yeah. the name of the teams has totally fried my brain. I'm saying Peabody and Sherman when I'm talking about Nai Nai and Free Strauss that it's completely knocked me off. I don't know about you. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to like keep the team straight when you get throw team names in there and I'm like, oh gosh, I'm like I will never have a memorized unless it's like teams like Tessa Pedal that just like, you know, mesh their names together. Yeah. Like, easy to 